All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get started with Google Sheets for iPad, including the key formatting tips that you'll really need to know. I'm an EdTech coach and I've helped lots of teachers and schools integrate tools like Google Sheets into their workflow. And Google Sheets for iPad is a great way to organize your data without being tied to a computer. So let's go through how to format cells, numbers, and text. And later you'll get my ready to use template and a few time-saving tips that most tutorials miss. All right, I'm here in Google Sheets. So let's just take a little look around the interface. You can see it's quite bare at the moment. It's a little bit different to how it looks on desktop. And there are a few little key things that are missing that I'll share with you in a moment. Um, here you've got the option to share with other people and undo and redo, add comments, and a few extra features here at the side. Now, as soon as I click on one of these cells, then you've got all of these other options that will look familiar if you've used the desktop version before. Now, the only things that are really missing from this toolbar are things like your tech settings and being able to insert various things. And they're hidden away up here at the top. So you've got a few tech settings in the toolbar at the top, but there are more hidden away in this menu here, which will be some of the text settings that you're familiar with from the desktop version, including text rotation. In this menu here with the plus, you've got the option to insert links, comments, charts, and images. Again, like you would with the desktop version, it will be on this main toolbar here, but we're a little bit more limited for space here on the iPad version. Another thing that's missing from this toolbar here is the option to zoom. Um, and you can do that if you've got a trackpad just by pinching and zooming like this, or if you're using your fingers and you've not got a keyboard attached, then you can do the same. And if you want to scroll across, you can just use your finger to scroll left, right, up, down. And finally, the only other missing things are hidden away here off the document. And if you click the three dots, you've got the option to star this document, to move it elsewhere, change its location, um, add a shortcut and so on. So you can see here, I'm starting with a kind of lesson timetable uh, template. I've got my headings here at the top, which I've made bold using this button, but otherwise the text is kind of just as it comes. I've also added a link to this template in the description below. So if you want to follow along with me uh, on your iPads to see how these features work, then please feel free to do that now. Now you'll see with some of these cells that you've got text that's been cut off um, and that can be solved in two ways. We could either uh, change the width of this column so that it all fits on or we could select that cell or multiple cells and use this text wrapping option here which changes the text wrapping to switch between one line and multiple lines depending on how long the text is. And this makes things a lot easier to read especially on smaller screens like iPads. Let's have a look at some of the other formatting tools here. Now if I select a cell um, and this button here will change the fill color. So I could change that fill. And you can see when I select a color, you've got other related colors that appear. Uh, we could also change the text color to make things a little bit more readable. And then you can switch between bold, italic, underlined, strike through, all your usual options. Now, another formatting feature you might want to take advantage of is this one here, which changes the borders of a chosen cell or multiple cells. And you can choose your border style, for example, if I have some uh, dotted lines, choose your border color. So this button here will change all of the borders for the cells that I've chosen to be the color and the pattern that I've chosen here. If I just come off that for a moment, we should be able to see that this now has a blue dotted line as I chose. Now, of course, you don't want to add borders to just any old cells. You want to be intentional with how you design your spreadsheet to make it as easy as possible to uh, read and understand. So with this sheet, I'm going to change the borders of the top row here, first of all. So let's go back to black, and I'm just gonna have a solid straight line like this here. And I'm just gonna apply that to my top row. And I'll do the same uh, with my first column here as well. I'm going to change that text to bold, and then change the borders in exactly the same way. It saved my settings from last time. Click that, and those borders are all uh, colored in black now. And then I can continue my formatting to change the color for different subjects, for example. Maybe I'll have science in red, uh, English in yellow, and so on. Obviously, that can be a little bit of a time-consuming process, and I'll go over um, what we call conditional formatting in another video, which changes the color of the cells based on the contents of it. So you can set it to automatically change color if the cell contains English, for example. Now, the other thing you may want to do with borders um, is down here at the bottom. If I just press this tick, then you can see the sheet that I'm currently on. Its default title is sheet one. And if I click that little arrow, 
I've got a few more options, including this grid lines option. It's automatically on. If I turn it off, then anything that I've not changed in terms of the grid lines and the borders uh, will disappear. And it just makes it a little bit cleaner. Depending on what you're trying to do with your sheet, it's just a nice clean look. Now, as you enter more data, you'll notice that the text is automatically shifted to the left side. Uh, you can change that if you want by selecting the cells that you want to change um, and using these alignment buttons up here. So it's automatically centered to the left, but if you wanted to align to center or to the right, then you have the option to change that there. I'm going to keep it in the center uh, just for the purposes of this sheet. Numbers, however, are a little bit different. If I type in an example number here, you'll see that it gets shifted to the right hand side. And this keeps our place values lined up correctly. So things like currency or decimals or totals all line up correctly. All right, a few time saving tips here and things that will help. Firstly, the ability to freeze rows or columns. So if I wanted to keep that uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday visible at all times, even when I scroll down, then I would want to freeze that row. And I can do that just by clicking here, uh, clicking once more, and then you can see this option freeze row. If I tap that, then now when I scroll down, that first row uh, will stay at the bottom. And it depends on which row that you choose, everything from there upwards will be frozen. So let's see if I do it for the second row, you'll see it changes to freeze two rows. And now those two rows are frozen as I scroll down. Same works for columns. Again, if I wanted to freeze uh, this first column here, clicking it once, clicking it again, press freeze column, and it will stay there on the left as I scroll along right on this spreadsheet. If you want to explore some other templates uh, that are already on Google Sheets, then you can tap this uh, plus button here at the bottom and select choose template. And you'll see that there's a range to choose from, some of which uh, may be helpful for you. So just take a look through those and have a little explore, try and change things and um, try to understand how these different types of templates work. So you've also got the option to move columns or rows to different places. So here, for example, if I press and hold on B, and now if I drag it across, you see this dark line comes down and that shows you where it's going to drop when you let go. So if I let go there, then now my Monday column is uh, moved to where I selected. So same goes for rows. If I press and hold one here, now you can see I can drag it up and down and the dark line shows where it's going to drop. All right, so if this video has helped you, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and you will be alerted of any future tech-related videos. If you've got any questions or you're stuck on something, drop me a comment and I will reply as soon as I can. And as I mentioned, the Google Sheets template that I used in this video is linked in the description below if you'd like to use that as a starting point. Thanks for watching and see you next time.